It's the 16th of December 2020 today. It's a Wednesday. You can see that it's not many days, just over 10. It'll be the end of the year already. And with the days and the time that has passed by, we've probably used that to find peace of heart and used it to try and develop our hearts to reach the inner Buddha, this inner state of awakening. But if we don't put any effort in, if we don't forbear with difficulties, then we simply aren't able to find this inner Buddha. And just like two stones, if we don't clash them against each other, then a spark can't arise, fire can't come up. But it's when we knock them against each other, then fire can come up, it can be born, that heat arises. And then that can give us great benefit. We can use that fire to boil water or to cook food. But if we don't have any effort, we don't set our hearts on this, then uh, that fire, it can't arise. Just like uh, for the Buddha, this inner Buddha, it's in a state of awakening to be able to come up in our hearts, for it to be born there. We need to depend upon our sincerity in this practice. And so if we don't have that effort, then it simply won't arise. And it doesn't matter how much we plead, how much we beg, that this in a state of awakening, it just can't come up in our hearts. And we may plead every single day, but if we don't give the practice a go, then the inner the Buddha simply can't arise. So having effort and really trying is something very important because the Buddha taught that we're able to free ourselves from suffering due to our efforts. And so we do need this energy in the practice to train, to be able to reach the Buddha in our hearts. So if all well, the things that prevent or dampen our efforts uh, are the, is not seeing the danger in the cycle of samsara and also being distracted and amused and drunk upon the things in this world. So all of us were probably met with the devadutas, the heavenly messengers in our lives. We've seen people who are old. We've seen people who are sick, who are in pain. Those who are bedridden or just aren't able to help themselves. Those illnesses or fevers come around to harass these people, and we all know that. We've also seen people die, maybe members of our family, maybe friends. But what the thing is, is that we often don't contemplate this. We don't bring these experiences into our own hearts, and we don't teach ourselves or realize that this will have to happen to us as well. That we too will have to get old just like this person. I'll get, have to get sick just like he is. And I'll have to die just like she had. And so from having been born, initially before that, we're in our mother's womb. And then we become a baby, then a child. Then we go off to study at school. And for some students, they're intelligent, and some aren't so intelligent. But we try. We try to pass our tests. And then we pass through the various levels of school, from primary school, and then on to high school, and then on to tertiary education. And then we join the workforce. And maybe we uh, work for a company, or if we have the barami, perhaps we become a, man a manager 
or we may own a business for ourselves. But no matter who we are, no matter what position we hold, old age, sickness and death are closing in on us all, all the same. But we often want to get things from this world. We want to gain things. We want to meet with gain and praise and status and pleasure. But even if we do gain all these things, there's something that is constantly deteriorating, and that's our time. And the time that we have in this world is constantly getting less and less. So if we just live our lives being distracted and amused by the things of this world, um, then our hearts will be lost. And we don't contemplate that the time that we have left, left is decreasing constantly. So the end of the year is approaching now, and a new year is coming as well. And everyone thinks that with a new year, they're going to get something new. And perhaps they'll get a bonus in their work. But the important thing that we need to make new is our hearts. And if our hearts don't reach this inner Buddha, then they're just the same old thing. If they don't get to this state, if we don't practice, then the greed we have increases. The hatred we have increases, and so does the delusion. They just grow stronger than they were before. But if we have the wisdom, then we'll be able to see stress waiting right in front of us, just like we chant, that the suffering is there just in front of us. Even though we may be at ease and comfortable now, we may be able to sit with ease. Perhaps we can walk, we can lie down and get to sleep. We can speak easily. But we don't know when things are when problems are going to arise with these things. Perhaps we'll develop issues with our brains and there may be a blockage that occurs or the veins may get smaller and this can prevent us from being able to walk. And also, if we have problems with the veins that go uh, through our lungs, then this can give us great illnesses. And these are... Uh, or the, the systems, the important systems in our hearts, uh, in our bodies, that if uh, the veins that lead to them or that run through them have problems, uh, then great amount of pain and suffering can arise. So it's especially so for the brain and the heart. These are very fragile organs. And even though now we may be able to use our bodies well, and normally, but one day they'll become abnormal. It can be very quick as well. Our blood can change suddenly and stop producing the red blood cells like it was before. It only produces white blood cells. And this can become a cause for cancer to arise. And also the environment that we're in is important, that we may be in quite a polluted environment, we may be around a lot of industrial activity. And for those people who are in such a place, it's common to develop uh, cancer of the blood. So these are the illnesses that come from developed societies. So the blood cells start becoming abnormal and sickness arises. And we don't know when this is going to happen. Perhaps for many people, they will meet this new year, but some people won't reach that far. And we don't know when suffering and pain is going to come up. So these are all issues to do with this physical sankhara, or this bodily formation. And if we contemplate into it, we'll see that it really is something inconstant, unreliable, it's not sure. And if we see that, then our hearts gain wisdom. And through this, we'll also gain effort to try to find the path out of suffering. Because normally our minds go and attach to everything, 
they overlay this meaning of self upon everything. And then that gives us problems because when the body starts to degenerate, then we degenerate. When the body goes through pain, then we are in pain. And when the body dies, then we die. And there's always an ego that comes up with, with all of these things. So we do need to train ourselves um, to give rise to wisdom so that this inner nature of awakening can manifest in our hearts. And this comes up due to the effort that we have. And if we just sit around pleading for this inner nature of awakening to come up, it just can't do so. And just like if we don't knock those stones together, then fire can't arise. No matter how much we plead for heat, it won't come up. So even though we may want for this Buddha, the inner Buddha, to arise in our hearts, um, it's not going to come about just because we want it or just because we ask for it, beg for it every day. What we need to do is practice. And so the Buddha taught us this means of practice, the meditation. He taught us to build out by efforts and to not be heedless, to not get deluded or amused by our bodies. That even though they may look very strong today, or well, tomorrow are they going to still, still be that way? We don't know when pain is going to arise. We don't know when these bodies will die. And so people can die suddenly from many different things. It can be various accidents, or there are certain diseases uh, that can um, suddenly come upon the body. And for those people who die from these causes, how many of them think that it's going to happen to them? So we need to prepare ourselves first. We need to try to meditate before these things happen and to not be heedless. And this not being heedless is the path that takes us out of death. But we see that um, every day there are people around us. Um, they're walking around or they're able to sit or lie down and they're breathing. And so we think that they're still alive. But actually heedlessness itself is death. So normally we only think of dead people as those who are not breathing anymore. Uh, but really there are lots of people who are heedless, who are amused and lost in the things of this world. And even though they're still breathing, they're actually dead. So the Buddha taught us to not be heedless. And even just before he passed into Fana Nibbana, just before the Buddha passed away, he gave this teaching to be heedful. He taught that the sankharas, these conditioned phenomena, they're inconstant, they're unsure. And so it's something that we should think about and contemplate. But no matter what happens, or no matter who we are, no matter what the case, we're going to have to die for sure. No matter how we live our lives, no matter how important we may be, um, death is something necessary for us. So we may look at people who have died and think that they are quite different from us. Maybe we see a monk or maybe a lay person who's passed away and they look very far away. But really, they're actually close by and that death is closing in on us. And so all of us have known many people who have passed away already and even these great um, enlightened monks who have practiced very well, many of them have passed away into Nibbana. And there are those around the north of Thailand or the central plains or in the east. And great numbers have already passed away. And so people whose age is less than ours, many have died as well. People of the same age or people who are older have also died. 
And when we view things in this way, then we'll see that these bodies, they can't stay around. And they're just a collection of elements. And if they are able to stay for some time, then they do so. But when they stop being able to stay, then they disappear. And they deteriorate uh, following their nature and following time. And when they break apart, then there's really nothing there. There's nothing left. And people take them and they may bury them in the ground or may burn them. And then the elements just break apart. They go their own way. So we need to contemplate in order to find knowledge and wisdom. We seek out and we try to find the Dhamma. And the time that we have is of great value. And so we should use that to try to not be heedless, to try to see this truth. But for lay people, it's necessary to also spend time finding the four requisites. Um, they have to do this. But for monks, we have these provided, so we have the time. We can practice a lot, and we should use this opportunity. And even though we have, may have duties to do, uh, we should be practicing meditating while we're doing that, to not be heedless at all. Seeing that life is not sure, but death is sure. And death is the culmination of our lives, and life must end in death. And when we think in this way, then our hearts can settle down, become peaceful, and be relieved of any anxiety that they feel. And they gain a degree of wisdom. But this comes from this perception or memory of anicca that we bring up. And it's close to true wisdom, but it's actually more a state of samadhi, that the mind has reached peace, and so it's not anxious about anything. And this is what happens when we use the object of death as a meditation subject. It's able to destroy the worries, the concerns that we have. And so Lumpur Cha taught that those people who have very strong aversion, hatred, sorry, greed, hatred, or delusion, they should use uh, this object of death and contemplate it. So we can ask ourselves that when we die, what are we going to want? And what's the point in ha getting greedy? What's the point in hating anyone? And we see that whatever we're attached to will lead us to a bad rebirth. So we need to try to uh, train our minds and find the time. It may just be one time during each day that we put down all our concerns. And so uh, we just put down everything and try to make our minds peaceful, seeing that since we have to die, we should prepare ourselves first to not be heedless, to put in our efforts, to put in our energy, and try to do this constantly. And do a lot of sitting meditation, walking meditation, chanting. And we try to develop this way. And we do this a lot. We train ourselves a lot.